Hi everyone. So hope all are doing well. And today I want to make a video on cover sheet. And when it comes to responding to your RFE, what needs to be filled in this particular sheet? Now, a lot of students have reached out to me and this is a very common question. I thought like a video will be helpful and I'll get straight to the point because when I got my RFE in 2021, cover sheet was not applicable at that time. So I think this has started something maybe in 2022 or 2023, I don't know, but it wasn't there in 2021. So what happens when you get an RFE and what this cover sheet is about? So basically when you get an RFE notice, you get a document that states what your RFE is, which is usually called the RFE notice. And then there is a cover sheet. Now, um, I'm having an example of cover sheet side by side. It basically says that um, when, you, when you get that sheet, um, it has four different boxes and uh, there is a set of instructions that say that, you know, you need to select the appropriate box. And then there are four options and I'm going to read those out to you. It says a new G28, additional fees, additional forms, and then there is other. So students would reach out and ask like, you know, what needs to be selected on, on this cover sheet and uh, either of these four boxes, do we need to select any? So the answer to this is no, in most of the cases, because when I have seen these RFEs over the course of a couple of years, usually there is no one that I have seen who needs to submit a new G28. Uh, or with additional fees or forms. What happens with additional forms is that you are submitting an additional form which you didn't previously submit it, or they requested you to submit a form. But most of the RFE cases are straightforward in terms of the information that is requested. It all comes from um, the documents that you already have. So they just need more clarification added to it. So usually, Additional forms or fees is not requested in majority of the cases. Um, could be one or two exceptions. So I don't want to say 100% they're not asked for. But majority, I haven't seen anyone um, who, has, who has been requested all this information. And then other is usually something that, you know, if you're submitting um, apart from this G28, additional fees, additional forms, is this something else um, that goes in other? At times, what I've seen is that uh, some students have filled other and it hasn't make, made any difference in their uh, approval. If you click on other, it's fine. But um, I have also seen students who haven't clicked any, like uh, selected anything and they got the approval. So it's basically, unless you have any of this, you don't need to select anything and you can just simply go forward and submit your RFE response. Now, another thing to consider in your um, cover sheet is that there is another box after these four boxes that if you have moved, you need to read it very carefully. It says that if you have moved, write your current address in the blank area below and please be sure to write it clearly. Um, so then they give you another box where they want you to select only if you have moved to a new address. And then if your petitioner has done it, which is your either if you're doing it through a lawyer or an attorney, if they have done it, so they can click select it. And then the other cases, if you are the applicant and if you have moved since you submitted your uh, your uh, documents and you got this RFE and if you move to a new address, then you need to select this box. So what happens is that you don't need to do it unless you move, which is very clear in the description. But sometimes what happens is I've seen students, they do not read those couple of lines and then they just click applicant or beneficiary and then, then they submit. What happens here is that it won't uh, impact your case or it won't lead to a denial or refusal. It just adds an extra layer of complexity because then you haven't moved, uh, but you still selected that box. And you know students sometimes forget to provide what the new address is, or even if they forget to even add that address is required in that particular um, scenario. So what will happen is you click it um, and you submit your response and then, you know, it might take additional few days 
to process and see, you know, nothing changed, but you still selected it. So this is what the cover sheet is. You need to read it carefully and only select what is applicable. Otherwise, you can simply just upload your RFE. You don't need to worry about um, selecting what is asked and what is not asked. The order matters, which is another thing I want to mention that if you are submitting it by mail, you need to follow the sequence. Cover sheet is usually asked first. They'll mention that what needs to go first, followed by your RFE notice, and then your RFE response. But if in case you are submitting it online, you'll see a different category show. Recently, a student submitted, he got approval within five days. What he followed was he submitted his cover sheet and the RFE notice from USCIS in the USCIS correspondence category. You'll see these categories show up when you are submitting your response online. And then if you are submitting a cover letter, you scan... Um, Upload it. It's not mandatory. It's advice that you submit a cover letter. It goes in other supporting documents. That is another category. And then your RFA response, your documents that you'll submit as a part of your response, they go under the RFA response category. So this is what you need to follow in terms of submitting it online. Usually uh, five documents is the maximum at the first go that you can do, but you can also submit other supporting documents. Um, there is an option to do that. I highly recommend that you combine relevant documents together to make sure there are five documents so you're not submitting anything else extra somewhere else. And then you are uploading your RFE documents in the relevant category. So um, that's all I wanted to share in this video. It's brief, it's concise, but this will give you a sense on how you need to fill in your cover sheet and how you need to upload your documents. And other advice is that, which I've repeated in other videos as well, please do not submit your response both ways, which is offline and online. Online is definitely quick. It's fast. You get a response sooner. Um, so it is highly advised, but do not submit it both ways because it only adds delays and complexity to the case because you just need to submit it once. Um, so feel free to reach out. I will be more than happy to answer any other, any other questions that you have on this and in general with RFEs um, and uh, do watch my other videos on RFEs and uh, I'll see you all in the another video. Thank you.